Now, sometimes when you're dealing with absolute value inequalities, you'll be dealing with expressions instead of just the variable x. So let's go through a couple of cases here. So let's say you have the absolute value of an expression is greater than a when a is positive. So for example, the absolute value of 2x minus 7, when is it greater than 5? How do we solve this inequality? So what you do is you take this inequality and you split it up into two cases. So you take what's inside the absolute value, the 2x minus 7, you put a negative in front and rewrite the inequality, and then you put a positive in front and then rewrite the inequality. And then you just solve it because the absolute value is gone, you just solve it like a regular inequality. So this positive one here, everything would stay the same in the bracket, so it's 2x minus 7 is greater than 5, bring the negative 7 over, so 2x is greater than 12, right, 5 plus 7, divide both sides by 2, so when x is greater than 6, that's one of the solutions. Let's go to this one. So we have this negative 1 in front, in front of the bracket, uh, in front of the expression, so we distribute it inside, so we'd have negative 2x plus 7, is greater than 5. Now there are a couple of things you can do here. You can bring the 7 over and then divide both sides by negative 2, but when you divide uh, an inequality by a negative, you'll have to make sure you flip the sign. So I prefer to just bring the variable parts over to where they'll be positive. So this negative 2x, let's bring over to that side, and then this 5, let's bring over to the left side. So we'd have 7 minus 5, Right, positive 5 we brought over became uh, negative 5. And then uh, this negative 2x, let's bring over to the right side, and that becomes positive 2x. So 7 minus 5 is uh, 2, greater than 2x, divide both sides by 2. So another solution is when x is less than 1. So when x is less than 1, or when x is greater than 6, those two solutions will satisfy this inequality. And now taking these solutions, showing it on a number line, so any values that are greater than 6 would work when x is greater than 6. Notice that it's not inclusive of 6, so we have this open dot on the number line at a value of 6. And for all values, x values that are less than 1, not inclusive of 1, so there's this uh, open dot. If this was uh, inclusive of 5, then this would have changed to inclusive of 6 and inclusive of 1, and there would be this solid dot. But it wasn't. It wasn't inclusive, so that's why the, uh, the open dot is there. Make sure you uh, pay attention to that when you're making your number lines. Now, what if you ran into another greater than uh, absolute value inequality, but instead of the a being positive, it was now negative. So two x, when is 2x minus 7? greater than negative 5. Well, if you think about it, as we mentioned in the video before, an absolute value always has to be positive. So it will always be greater than negative 5, no matter what x value you use here. Even if you get a negative for 2x minus 7, that will always turn into a positive, and it will always be greater than negative 5. So the solution here is x, e, r. All solutions will work all x values. It's an infinite amount of solutions, so on the number line everything would be, uh, would be highlighted. Moving on to the next case, if you have an expression that's less than a value when the value is positive, so let's use the same example we have here, but instead of greater than 5 we have less than or equal to 5. Same thing applies, we take this and we split it up into two cases. So we would take this absolute value, put a negative in front, that would be one case. Take the absolute value, put a positive in front, that would be another case, and then we just solve. So let's start off with the negative first. So distributing the negative inside the bracket, we'd have negative 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 5. Let's bring the negative 2x over, let's bring the 5 over, so we'd have 7 minus 5 is less than or equal to 2x, and then 2 2x divide both sides by 2. So when x is greater than or equal to 1. 
That's one of the solutions. Solving this, the positive can just go away. And then uh, bring in the negative 7 over. 5 plus 7 would be 12. Divide both, both sides by 2. So when x is less than or equal to 6. So when x is greater than or equal to 1, and when x is less than or equal to 6, those solutions would satisfy that inequality. So taking these solutions, showing it on a number line, any x values that are less than or equal to 6, but greater than or equal to 1, would work. So any values in between 1 and 6. And notice how because it's inclusive of the 1, inclusive of the 6, we put a solid dot instead of a open dot. Another thing I want you to notice is, you could see this with the previous video as well, whenever you get a less than inequality for an A value that's positive, you'll always get a solution for X that has to be in between two numbers. And then whenever you have a greater than inequality when A is positive, you'll always get a solution for X where X has to be greater than a certain number and less than a certain number. So whenever you're dealing with these inequalities, consider that the number lines have to look a certain way depending on the type of inequality that you're given, whether it's a greater than inequality or less than inequality. You can also see this pattern emerging for A values that are positive in the previous video that we did. Moving on to the next case, a less than inequality when a is negative. So for example, the absolute value of 2x minus 7, when is it less than negative 5? Well, if you think about it, it will never be less than negative 5 because this absolute value will always be positive, no matter what x values we put in. So this here, there are no solutions to this case. Whenever you get a less an expression, the absolute value of an expression being less than a negative number, there's never any solutions. Moving on to the next case, when the absolute value of an expression cannot equal a certain number as long as that number is positive. So an example, when the absolute value of 2x minus 7 cannot equal 5. Same exact thing that we've been doing here, split it up into two cases, put a negative in front of the absolute value, put a positive in front. I didn't put the bracket this time. So let's solve this one first. So we'd have negative 2x plus 7 cannot equal 5. Uh, bring the 2x over, bring the 5 over. So we'd have 7 minus 5 cannot equal 2x. Divide by both sides by 2. So we'd end up with x cannot equal 1. And then here, if we solve this, same thing, 2x cannot equal 12, divide both, both sides by 2, x cannot equal 6. So these are the solutions to this inequality. Because notice, if we plug in a 1 for x, we would get uh, negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5, which would give us positive 5, and that can equal 5. So we know that x cannot equal 1. And then if we plug in 6 for x, we would get the absolute value of positive 5, which is just positive 5, and that can equal 5. So we know that x cannot equal 6 either. So taking this solution, showing it on a number line, basically any x value on the number line will work except for 1 and 6. Therefore, we have these open dots at 1 and 6 because it can equal those values. And then our final case, the absolute value of an expression cannot equal a number if the number is negative. What would happen there? Well, if you think about it, the absolute value will always be positive, so it will never equal a negative number, no matter the x values you use. So the solution to this is x, e, r, meaning that there are an infinite uh, amount of solutions. for x. x can take any value.